HMS Weekly English Program. This is a weekly international Harari Media Services English program that focuses on different aspects and issues related to Harar and the Harari people, be it social, political, economic, or historical facts. In a nutshell, it deals with everything Harar in conjunction with affairs in Ethiopia. It is intended to reach Harari and non-Harari viewers and audiences alike around the globe. It is informative, educative, and above all, it is meant to present facts and build capacity at all levels. As witnessed by various governments and international organizations, undeniably, Harar is a city-state of peace within the Ethiopian galaxy and the African universe. This weekly English program was created to promote peace and humanity to its viewers allowing them to have people-to-people -people relationships of peaceful coexistence in Harar and Ethiopia at large. As such, today we have the following episodes for you. The Power of Information from the Standpoint of a Written Language by Dr. Abdurrahman Garad We live in an information age where advancements in technology has revolutionized the method of which messages are displayed, processed, retrieved, and delivered through various platforms of media with a groundbreaking effect on our daily lives. The following few headlines are designed to illustrate the need for the application of literacy and its impact on social progress using Harari as a showcase. Point of Reference The Written Language when we say media in the context of our present discussion, the focus is on the script or text that we use as the medium of communicating information in a language written in contrast to the one defined by means of audio and video devices. In its printed and digitized format, text communication extends its outreach in leaps and bounds breaking all regional and generational boundaries as a mass media with far-reaching implications on the enhancement of conversation among its native speakers, leading to unprecedented pace in their progress. Making Harari a writing language. Asserting our identity. To begin with, the information has direct and lasting effects on the development of our cognitive ability as well as the language used in the process of conveying it. That alone constitutes a compelling reason to work on making Harari a literary language to help it survive the onslaught of alternative languages that are vying to replace it at its demise. As such, we need to take bold measures in terms of planning and concerted actions toward its revival to reverse the current downward spiral of the language. What makes such measures all the more urgent is the fact that language is like the DNA of who we are as a society. Because of its nature as a depository of our cultural information and manifestation of our historical heritage. Adding to that is the undeniable correlation between language and identity which is the indispensable ingredient that we need as a requirement for the assertion of our right, be it territorial, social, economical, political, or otherwise. On one hand, if we continue ignoring the language revival issue, we may be in for an identity crisis that may represent a much more serious communal security risk, one that we blame the outside forces to have inflicted upon us. On the other hand, if we work towards revival of Harari language wisely, the present security deficit may prove to be a blessing in disguise or because it would empower us to assert our identity, to harness the strength within our own culture. Communication through social network. Ensuring our unity. In the course of our history after the downfall of Harari Emirate, our medium of communication and writing added Ge'ez and the Latin script on top of the historically prevalent Arabic. The pattern of our proficiency took the form of our demographic variation depending on location, gender, age group, and education. 
Singling out location as an example for the purpose of elaboration, one can assert that as a substantial number of us moved away from the center to become more and more geographically dispersed, our linguistic proficiency was shaped by our newly adapted location. The change proved to be especially consequential for the new generation of young Hararis, who lack strong communal bond to learn and retain Harari, if only as a second language. Our attempt to remedy the situation by establishing residential neighborhoods and its social component of Afocha, together with community centers, was indeed helpful, but falls way short of the requirement and left much to wish for. When it comes to our situation in Western communities, where social mobility takes an extreme form, that component of neighborhood becomes a serious missing link that factored in the increasing degree of alienation, which is the leading cause for the widening social gaps we come to recognize, not only between the old and the new generations, but also among each one of them. The solution for this existential problem is to make structural change in our social organization, whereby our Mugad institution is revived to work with equal footing with the Afocha, thereby reforming a representative assembly that creates a platform for power-sharing mechanisms that favors teamwork and collaboration. The relevance of such structure change lies in its significance as an infrastructural framework that promotes social interaction between the two generations by engaging them to work for a common goal through communication by which the process is considered by linguistics as the direct method of learning or teaching any language. Using Latin for communication in Harari, writing convention. That brings us back to the discussion of making Harari a literary language by choosing the most suitable alphabet. Arabic is out of question as its use was restricted to mainly religious matter and hence has seldom been used as a medium of communication in Harari. The restriction of Ge'ez is the expatriate Hararis will be left out of the game. That leaves us with Latin alphabet being the practical choice as it covers the bulk of our population who use digital hardware including cell phones for communication and especially as that includes our expatriate population of young Hararis. With the proliferation of social media, which created the perfect tool for Hararis to express themselves on a number of burning issues they care about. It is high time we set up a language academy, or at least a committee of experts, to lay down the rules as to how Latin should be standardized for use to write in Harari in a manner which is uniform. In the process of such endeavors, it is important that the phonetic characteristics of the Harari language are taken into account for reasons of ease and adaptability, as well as to shorten the learning curve. The Harari phonetic sound has a simple pattern compared to its Amharic counterpart, as it is composed of Arabic components of ba, b, bu, coupled with its longer version of ba, bu, bi, plus the Amharic component consisting of be and bo, which comes only with longer versions, say very few expectations. Written material as a source of information. Cultural heritage. The importance of written material as a source of information can hardly be emphasized. Suffice to mention its effect in the retention and enrichment of language, because only when we write, we feel obliged to choose our vocabulary and grammar with the utmost care as we lack the advantage of facial expressions sound annotation, and hand gestures to convey our message, thereby raising the sophistication level of our language, leading to the promotion of our culture through spread of knowledge. It is not surprising that the call to read and write can be found in the Holy Book of Islam, or better known as the Qur'an. In fact, it is remarkable that the very first verse that came down and was written for the Qur'an dealt with the imperative call to read. This is demonstrated in Surah 96, Ayah number 1, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes, Iqra, or read. It then goes on to say, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. 
Read with the name of your Lord who has created. The word is yet again repeated for further emphasis in the context of the pen and the process of acquiring knowledge by stating in Ayah 4, Allama bil qalam, which translates to, He who has taught by the pen. To top it all off, the Quran itself means only that, reading or reciting, even though it is described in many other ways, including a written record or a fully inscribed registrar by well-known scholars based on the interpretation of the Quranic verse in Surah 83, Ayah number 9, which states, Kitabun Marqum. It is very important to reflect upon these facts at this juncture in our history, especially because it represents a part of our spiritual culture and hence we can get the much needed inspiration for the revival of our culture in all its dimensions, socially, economically, and politically. It is not only cliche or an empty rhetoric when one says information is power, as it is the stuff, the all-important word, language, and knowledge are made of, without which any of our endeavors can affect meaningful change to alleviate social problems through self-reliance and to lift our living standard through harnessing our resources is next to impossible. Concluding Remark Written Material that we read is a graphic representation of our sound or spoken language. As a form of information that transcends space and time, it is the first form of mass media, even at its early stage when its production was restricted to handwriting. With the modern advancements that brought print and digital media into the picture, we are talking about exponential growth of production potentials at our fingertips. In spite of its significance as a primary source, it will be gross oversimplification to restrict the question of information to print or digital media. First, there are sound, pictures, videos, and art forms that are accompanied with them like a poem or a song or music that we can employ to convey information. Added to that are the audiovisual components ported by the internet or YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, and the like, which cover wide-ranging aspects of presentation. All those capabilities result in opportunities and challenges that leave us facing hard choices. Either join the digital age or lag behind the competition. The good news is that with the establishment of international Harari Media Services, among others, we have a marvelous beginning that wisely utilizes all of those media devices for the betterment of Harari people through the power embedded in the dissemination of information. We should apply relentless effort to keep it going in a sustainable manner. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
IHMS.